So if you all didn't know, I'm a big Volkswagen guy and I own two Volkswagens at home and this is my daily driven Polo GT because ESG is life. But the boys at uh, my office told me that we were reviewing a sub 4 meter today. Well, I thought it was the Amio GT line, but it's this, the Ford Aspire. And well, I have to drink this American drink because I have to leave my bias at home and cleanse my soul. So in terms of the looks, I have to say that the Aspire looks much more elegant and uh, smoother in terms of the designing from its uh, counterparts in the market. You have these blacked out headlight underpinnings. They were first silver before uh, the facelift happened. You have these elegant looking chrome bits around here. And you have this Aston Martin-esque uh, grille up front with the mesh covering the radiator. Uh, one thing that I really don't like about the front end, and I mean the front end is really beautiful, is this bash plate over here. It looks horrible and that's something I would instantly remove. So when it comes to the side profile of the Aspire, it really looks like a sedan rather than a sub 4 meter monstrosity. And that's mainly due to the stretched out tail lights and headlights which make the car look more proportionate. But there is one big flaw in the side profile of this car and it's this thing over here. So the side indicators are given over here but Ford has still given a fake chrome bit over here to cover up, cover it up. Like, why would you do that? Why? Just remove it. We want a flat surface over here. Just remove it. So the back end of the Figo after the facelift hasn't changed much. You get this revised bumper with these fake inlets over here. I don't see a point in that. Uh, you have this chrome bit over here and these uh, sensors for the parking, maybe they could have been covered up a little bit better. But all in all, it's not a bad looking back end. Uh, it kind of reminds me of the Tata Zest in some sort of way because of the way it's uh, designed and shape. But it looks alright, better than other sub 4 meter cars. Yes, so this it, car's interior is really plush and it's a good place to spend some time in. One thing that Ford really knows what to do is the steering wheel. I mean the grips on the steering wheel and everything, it's so easy to hold on to and for handling purposes the grips are really helpful. Apart from that, the infotainment system is the same infotainment system which you get in the freestyle. Uh, if you haven't checked that video, check the link above. Uh, and it's so easy that I mean a 5 year old can figure it out. Apart from that, the seats are really plush and comfy. They're like true American seats. with a big and they hold you nicely. And uh, add that with the plus suspension which soaks up almost every bump. This is like a mini S class I mean. Nothing else to say. But there is one big flaw in this car and it is a gigantic flaw which is the A pillar. If my friend Hamza who is almost wide as a truck stands there I cannot see him behind that. It's so big. When you sit in the back seats, it does not feel like a sub 4 meter car. You have so much of legroom. I mean, I'm not a tall guy by any means. I'm 5 foot 8 inches. And look at the amount of legroom I have. Uh, headroom is also pretty sufficient. I mean, I mean I'm mean, i pretty sure like another head of mine could fit in this. Um, and yeah, the seats are really plush and comfortable, just like the front seats. And I mean, I can think of using the back seats more rather than the front seats. Um, and yeah, one thing that I would change in this car is maybe the interior color. I would prefer black because this beige is kind of not my thing. Uh, the window line is descending towards the front so I have a good view of what's going on outside and it does not feel claustrophobic by any means. So if you want to open the boot of this car, it's a simple two click button, click on the key fob. But every time you open the boot, you don't know if you have to claim insurance or not because look at the way the boot opens. Yeah, it, it'll almost break a window. Uh, the way of loading in stuff is pretty easy. You just have to pick it up and throw it inside. And the boot, ah, uh, it's big enough. Uh, but I think you can get bigger boots in the segment. But by no, by not any means that this is a small boot. And it's perfect for a family holiday. So this is the Ford Aspire Titanium. Which means that this is the top end car in the Aspire lineup. 
and basically this car has a 1.5 liter TDCI engine which is a diesel block and I mean the power figures of this car are a bit weird and when you're driving it on the road they do not completely translate into what's written on paper so the 1.5 liter engine produces almost 100 bhp and it produces 250 newton meters of torque and for a sub 4 meter car that's a lot of power and I mean the thing is I drive a Polo GT every day right and that car has a 1.2 liter turbocharged block and it has a 7 speed DSG so it's a decently fast car it has 105 bhp and 175 newton meters of torque but that Polo GT feels insanely fast compared to this I mean this car has no sort of urgency in the throttle no sort of urgency in through the engine also and that's the main thing why this car is more of a comfort kind of power this car's power uh, this car's power is mostly situated in the lower revs and I mean obviously it's a diesel so the uh, place where the most of the power is is in the lower revs and that's where this car is most comfortable and happy once you go above like 3500 rpm the car starts to cry and say like oh no why are you doing this i'm not meant for this please leave me alone below 3500 that's the sweet spot in terms of the driving experience the place where the ford aspire truly shines is in the suspension department i mean i know i'm comparing the polo gt in almost every aspect of this car but uh, that's what I drive every day, that's what I'm most comfortable with and compared to that, this feels like an S-Class, I'm not even kidding. I mean like the Polo GT is quite stiff, not really stiff, but after a time you forget the meaning of comfort in such a stiff car and this is so comfortable and it's so, what do you say, it soaks up the bumps so beautifully that I mean your the suspension and especially these seats, all of this is just a big plus point in terms of driving it every day. I think so, the conclusion that I would like to give this car is that it's a great daily driver and it's meant for going from place A to place B in decent amount of comfort rather than going it in a fun way because even though it has a big engine in terms of India standards and it has good amount of power and uh, torque specs it is not a car which is meant to be hooned around on the mountain roads or something like that it is good for highway cruising and everyday usage so, would I recommend the Ford Aspire to uh, a friend of mine or a, or a client of mine? I would because it looks decent, it has a good interior, it's reliable, it's not bad to maintain and I think so all in all it's a great package and this is the titanium model which means it has all of the goodies that you want. It also has a backup camera so that you don't crash into someone while parking your car and yeah I think I would because it looks good for the sub 4 meter segment and not like an Amaze or even an Amio for that case which is a perpendicular 90 degree cut at the back. So yeah, I would give this car a big thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel, comment down below what you think about the Aspire or what you think uh, you should buy the sub 4 meter uh, segment and let us know in the comments down below. Subscribe, like, share, comment all those formalities. I'll see you in the next one.